finally did it. I mulched everything. All right, I did a video a number of years ago about Back to Eden. Now, this was when I was urban farming. My context was totally different, and I had some critiques for Back to Eden, but not really. It was more critiques on Back to Eden in my context, which was market gardening at the time. So if you're not familiar with what Back to Eden is, I'm certainly no expert in it, but my understanding of it is it's basically just mulch everything with wood chips, and the wood chips do some incredible stuff to the soil. And so what's changed about what I said then and where I'm at now? Well, primarily what's changed, well, there's two things really. One is I'm no longer commercially farming. So I'm no longer cranking out crops like salad greens and baby root vegetables where I'm direct seeding them every week and I'm turning over beds constantly. I'm no longer doing that. And that was a big part of my criticism of how Back to Eden gardening would work in a market garden context. And I actually still kind of stand by that. If you're having to, I mean, you can't seed into this bed here. So we've got a bed of onions here. I've actually mulched the entire bed. I couldn't just run a seeder through here. I'd have to remove the mulch, which I'm actually prepared to do. Um, but to do that on scale, where you got to move mulch off 20 beds every single week to direct seed, that creates an extra, a lot of extra work. So the other thing that's changed in my context is I don't have access to good compost. Uh, at least I don't have access very easily. The cost of trucking these days for me to bring up 20 yards of compost up here is really expensive. It's probably, uh, I'd probably pay $2,000 in just trucking alone. So it, it isn't really economically feasible. It doesn't make sense. So I have to start doing things to protect my soil with the resources that I have. And one of the resources I have, I live in a large area. I'm surrounded by forests. And of course, there's, there's a lot of logging that goes around here. Really good logging too, I will say. A lot of good selective logging. Uh, some of the areas that you see around me in the background have been selectively logged for 30 or 40 years and you can't even tell that they were logged. So a lot of good logging happens around here, but I have access to really good bar bark mulch. I can literally get it for free. All I got to do is get it here. And so that's what I've been doing. And in this garden plot we're in right now, one of the big challenges I've had with this one, this was the first terrace that uh, uh, was constructed on my 40 acre off-grid homestead. And um, th this soil in particular, I didn't condition to the same level that I have some of the other terraces that I have crops in right now. So I didn't do a good of a job because I didn't have my soil screen at the time. I didn't have the technique totally refined, which I do now. And so what I've actually done here is I've mulched on the bed. So not only have I mulched everything, all of my walkways, my perimeters, I still have more mulching to do. I've already gone through about 40 yards of, of, um, of, of mulch. And I've, I've mulched the walkways, you know, in a nutshell, the, the, there's another video about this that might be out or is coming out on YouTube where I show how I build my garden beds from scratch and it involves bringing in soil that I've screened in two stages, subsoil and topsoil, and then mulch in the pathways. And I do lay it on quite thick. Um, but what I actually did here is I've screened that bark mulch. So I've used my soil screen, which I've been using to screen all my soil to bring into the, to my terraces, except this part, I, I built this one before I had the screen. But um, I actually put this bark mulch through the soil screen and it's made a really nice finer mulch so this is the mulch that's in the walkway you can see it's a lot more coarse and then the stuff that i've mulched that i've put on the bed is a lot finer and then that's what i've put here after the crop was planted and so one of the challenges i've had on this 
particular plot right here is, like I said, the soil wasn't conditioned to the same level that I'm doing it now. It, it, the soil was kind of a mix of subsoil and topsoil. I didn't have my screen at the time. There's some rocks in it. And I had a problem all season where these onions weren't growing very well. They're actually now really starting to grow, but they, um, they were kind of just sitting there for a while. And the primary reason was the soil, which was predominantly clay, was just getting hammered. So I, I, would, I would water it and then it would get really sunny up here. And it is sunny up here overall. We've had a, we had definitely had a cold spring, but the summer has been punishing hot. And the soil, and this I've talked about this for years, is you have really clay soil with very little organics in it. When you water it and then the sun comes up, it dries and almost turns to concrete right away. And that creates a thick crust in the top one inch of your soil, which inhibits the growth of crops. It makes seeds difficult to germinate, often won't germinate at all. And it also even restricts when you have transplants, it just makes things difficult. It's, it's, it's constrained, it's, it's restricted uh, because that soil keeps drying out. And so what the mulch has done in this case is quite amazing actually. If you just zoom in here and look, I can, so this hasn't been watered in a little while. Uh, you know, it might've been watered last night. It was watered last night actually, but if I pull my mulch back, I can see that the soil is still brown like it's just been watered it's soft i can stick my finger into it and it's holding that moisture which is great because before i put this mulch on it wasn't doing that at all it was just it would look gray it would turn to crust um and uh th the crops weren't growing so this is working incredibly for me right now and so you know really what the difference is like i said i want to outline it again because I did have criticisms for Back to Eden before. Um, and I think it always comes down to context. It's what, what's your context? And so context change, you know, as, you, as your circumstance in life or on your homestead change, as you're uh, in your business or whatever it is, everything you do should be based on your context. And so my context is a lot different now. I'm no longer commercially farming. I don't need to turn and burn direct seeded crops on a weekly basis any longer. So the idea of having mulch even on my beds and then removing it temporarily to run a seeder through here and then put in the back isn't that big of a deal. I'm prepared to do that now. And I gotta say, it works really well. So why don't we just take a little walk around this garden terrace and I'll show you guys what we've done here. Cause this one is actually now completely finished. It's completely planted out and um, I'm quite happy with the results. All right, I'll just give you guys a little tour of this terrace, and this is, this is the model in which I'm going to replicate everywhere on my homestead because I have two more larger terraces to construct. I've already started a little bit on the one above. You can see a bunch of trusses up there. That's the last terrace that I'll construct, and that one won't happen until next year when we get back to building the house. But there is another terrace between my corn crop here and that one, that I am going to finish before the fall. But I'll just give you a little tour of this whole setup here. And this is what I'm going to replicate uh, throughout my whole garden as I expand it. Because I actually can, I have a lot more area to terrace. This, we're on sort of um, a little bit of a ridge on this particular one. There's multiple ridges here. We're on a bigger ridge. My whole property is on a ridge, on a mountain ridge. And my property line actually goes at the very top of this mountain over to my left and up the hill. But this is a little mini ridge, and there's actually another three or four terraces that I could construct if I wanted to have up to one acre of garden plots like this. But I've only planned to do a half acre, which is plenty for a family and could even run a, a small commercial operation on it if I wanted to. But so this is how I'm constructing my beds. You know, there's another video on this specifically, but in a nutshell, what I do is I, I use, I screen soil, I screen two types of soil, subsoil and topsoil. I shape the area with my mini excavator and then I start bringing in subsoil, large amounts, buckets of it, drop it down. I level it out with rakes and then I shape the beds by taking a square shovel and shoveling onto the beds, the subsoil, making each bed about a foot deep 
Then I come in with mulch, lay that in the walkways so that when I rake the beds flat, they don't just erode down the hill. The, the, the mulch actually acts as a structural component to hold the, um, the soil in place. And then I do the topsoil. I, I fertilize and then I do the topsoil on top of that. Uh, and then mulch on the beds if I so choose. But that's the basic construction of how these, uh, these beds are gonna go. Now in this plot right here, and it's the same for all, all everything else, is I do a hybrid irrigation. So right now we've got drip irrigation, and we've also got overhead irrigation. Now I like to do that because when I direct seed a crop, let's say I'm doing uh, carrots like this, I want to overhead water at first so that the top one inch is equally wet. Whereas if you're just doing drip, it, it, it's, it does create some sparse parts um, here and there. And you won't have uh, a, be, a good, ger a, you won't have as, as good of a germination rate uh, with, than when you um, overhead water. So all of my plots have two systems. This one in particular, has got drip and overhead, but the type of overhead we're using here is a impact head. And on this one, we've got one impact head in the center and then two impact heads kitty corner from each other. And those run separately. So in, in one zone, it'll run those ones and they'll water mostly everywhere here. And they'll be uh, going at a 90 degree pattern. And then this one just runs at a 360 degree pattern. So for the most part, now that these crops are established, I'm just running drip. But the nice thing about the, the hybrid system is that I can flip between either one. And so this whole thing is on a zone and I can just go either drip or overhead. And I actually could blend the two and run them both at the same time, but I won't get as much um, pressure on my overheads if I'm doing that. So that's how we do it. Now let's head over here. On this part of the garden, this used to be a path that I came down with my machines to build this whole thing. But I don't need this path anymore. So I've actually made some kind of funky beds here where I've put a bunch, I just planted these strawberries and they look like they're sort of dead, but they're not. They'll, sh they'll shoot up some more uh, sprouts from their crown and these, these, these leaves will just die back. But I've built this into some other beds that I'm going to use because I no longer need machine access down here. I have another access down below, as you can see from the, uh, the overhead footage. Right here, there's this water feature, uh, which isn't completely finished. I need to bring some more drain rock in here. But what I did is I exposed this. This is actually what I'm dealing with. This is um, if you go down a foot in most places on my property, this is what's here bedrock. Uh, some places I have more soil or less soil than others, but for the most part, this is what my property is and this presents a lot of challenges, but it's actually, I found that uh, it's more of a blessing than it's a curse because having access to all this rock allows me to construct a lot of cool stuff and rock's expensive if you're going to buy it. But so this is a drainage feature. It ties into a, uh, the, the gray water from my cabin which first goes through a, um, a little filter, a grease trap filter, and then it comes and drains through here. And there's another pipe in here, which is a catchment, which catches a lot of the overflow um, and runoff and that comes through here. And then there's, a, there's drains all around these terraces. And I've done another video on that in the past. And all the terraces that I construct in the gardens have those drainages, as I'll show you as we head over here. So in this one, this was a little space between this greenhouse that is now finished, or at least all planted out, um, and the other terrace we were just in. Same thing, uh, and this is, the, this is the one I demonstrated in a, a YouTube video that I think might be out by the time you see this. And this is deep mulch, so there's this, this path that I'm standing on here is one foot deep. These beds are probably about 14, 16, 14 to 16 inches deep of soil. There's about, 10 to 12 inches of subsoil and then about two inches of topsoil on top. So these are very deep sitting on top of a, basically this stuff, just hard compacted, some soil, a lot of rock. And that's how these are built. These, th this area here in particular 
is a combination of wobblers, which are a very common um, irrigation system for market gardens. I still like them and I think they work in a lot of different contexts. And so I've got this particular area tied to the same zone as in my greenhouse. And so this is all done the same way. And these wobblers are only seasonal. I won't be running these uh, too far into the fall. At that point, a little, it'll all be drip irrigation. But so on this zone, I can turn on the drip or I can turn on the wobblers and I could run them partially the same if I wanted to. But this is how it's all uh, put together. And now in the greenhouse here, I finally got everything planted. I've left one bed empty because that's gonna be some spinach and greens in about three weeks to a month. But this is all planted out. We've got overwintered carrots planted here, just seeded a few days ago. And I've got uh, broccolinis, kale, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower all planted here. So this is, this is my, these are my winter greens. And this greenhouse is more of a three season greenhouse, but it's, um, it's an unheated greenhouse that will keep these crops alive but they'll be cold and dormant all winter long. And so once we get into late September or early October, we'll be putting the end walls on here and closing this up, but the greenhouse will be unheated um, and these crops will just be dormant. You know, the basic idea with an overwintered crop or a crop you wanna keep through the winter is that that crop grows to maturity before it gets cold. So these crops should be, hopefully, <laughs> they will be standing and have nice um, uh, you know bunches of kale or cauliflower or or broccolini on them before the end of October and then they'll just sit there dormant and I'll be able to come out here all winter and harvest albeit I'll be only able to harvest when it's warm in the greenhouse if it's minus 20 Celsius outside and cloudy it's still going to be cold in that greenhouse but if it's sunny I'll be able to come into that greenhouse and things will spruce up and I'll be able to harvest them and eat from this greenhouse all winter long, including the carrots. And I've demonstrated that many videos over the past. But essentially, that's all I wanted to show you guys today is how my context has changed, how this deep mulch is working great. You notice that I haven't put the mulch on these beds just yet, but I probably will. I have to screen more of it. It's quite a bit of a process for me to uh, screen this mulch and then apply this separately because this mulch would be different than what's going to be in the bed but i really like it and in my context where i can't buy where i can't get large amounts of compost any longer and i'm no longer needing to have beds to direct seed constantly the mulch works great and it does exactly what it's supposed to do is holding in moisture keeping the uh, soil intact you know mulch also helps with erosion when you have rain Soil always moves downhill. So the more you can protect the soil and cover the soil, the more it stays in place and the more you create an environment where nutrients are going to build up and all kinds of beneficial microbes will find their way and beneficial bugs will find their way into that soil if it's an environment they wanna live in. So hope you guys found that one helpful. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.